little while back in my old YouTube video, I made some offhanded comment about Littlest Pet Shop videos. And also the Littlest Pet Shop videos, what's up with that? There's like kids playing with their toys and talking, they're like holding up freaking their iPhone and they're like... And recently, I, being the tiny little aspiring creator that I am, um, like to look at what other people at my level are doing. So how I'll often find these people is I'll go on YouTube, I'll look up funny video and I'll sort by new. And when I do this, I get to see whoever uploaded most recently rather than whoever uploaded and their video became most popular. But I noticed something pretty odd when I searched by new. Every time I looked up funny video, the most prevalent type of video was a Littlest Pet Shop skit. And if you're like most people, you have no idea what that is. Essentially, there are these videos where people will get their iPhone and they'll set it up so that when they play with toys, they can voice over the characters um, with the recording and they make skits out of them. Hello? Oh, hey! And there's hundreds of different people aspiring to make this exact type of video. They're all following the exact same format. They're all very similar. And so that got me thinking, if all these people are doing the same thing on their own and they're aspiring to do something bigger, is there like a big Littlest Pet Shop skit channel? So I start going on all their videos and I start commenting like, this is really cool. Who's your inspiration? Who's a big YouTuber that you'd like to be like? Who's someone that made you want to make these type of videos? Most of the people, interestingly enough, uh, didn't respond because most of them were under the age of 10. However, I did get into a small conversation and went a little bit like this. What is this? What is what? Do you mean the video or what? Are Littlest Pet Shop skits doing well on YouTube? So far, yes, but I'm not that popular if that's what you mean. I meant more genres than personally. What is a Littlest Pet Shop channel you like? I really like CCR television. She is funny. Interesting. Thank you. And so that got me thinking, if I got a hold of one of these big channels, maybe I could see what their community is really about. Is this the next Five Nights at Freddy's fandom? Is it the next furry fandom? I really wanted to find out. So after getting the names of some of these bigger channels, I tried to get in contact with them in any way that I could. Most of their channels had personal emails or Instagram links, so I would go on those and try to contact them that way, but uh, most of them, again, didn't respond. That was until I got a very, very interesting Instagram DM from CCR Television. This person who is practically of celebrity status in the Littlest Pet Shop community, who had inspired hundreds of girls to make these skits, reached out to me personally. She happily obliged to do a audio interview with me. And I'll tell you what, I got so much more out of this interview than I was ever expecting to have. There's a lot of wasabi. <clears throat> Okay, got that. The pressure's on. This, I know, I'm like, this is, <laughs> this one's gotta work. All right, hi, <laughs> welcome back. Hi. This is the first time we're doing this. <laughs> totally. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, yeah, last time we had an issue with the audio, um, but this time uh, it should it should work. Um, so if you just want to introduce yourself real quick, like who you are, what you do. Um, hi, YouTube. I'm Cecilia, I'm 20 years old and I run a YouTube channel called CCR Television at present. It has about 70,000 subscribers, which is, um, and the whole basis of my channel is I do videos with Willis Pet Shop toys. For you, how did you get started making Littlest Pet Shop videos? So for me, I made a YouTube channel in 2008. I was nine years old and I would just make really funny, stupid videos and I'd post a lot of videos Making videos with um, little Willis Pet Shops, they're like a very convenient size to to really portray a story, I guess. And also I ended up finding out that there was a whole community growing. And then you kind of started to gain popularity, like how and like when? I started making videos in December of 2010, um, and then I quit around like 2012 because I was in middle school and LPS wasn't cool to me anymore. I ended up coming back 
um, after I graduated high school in 2017 because um, I had so many good memories from when I was younger making them. What really kickstarted my channel to be where it is now is um, a video that I made called um, What If LPS Relationships Were Realistic. It ended up blowing up a few months after I uploaded it. After like people started really noticing my videos, I decided that I would turn this into kind of a full-time thing. Yeah, I mean, it, it says that as of right now, your channel's at uh, almost 10 million views. So, I mean, that's pretty that's ginormous. crazy. <laughs> Are you at a point where you could like make a career off this? That's where I'm headed, honestly. That um, I'm super, super grateful for this. Um, I'm able to make a pretty like decent income. Like I'm not, I don't have to, uh work a quote-unquote normal job mm. for people that like don't really know much about the community or what it is uh really that you do other than the fact that it's it seems to be skits like what type of videos are you seeing and like what are the most like popular types of like littlest pet shop videos popular videos are definitely skits um other things that are pretty popular are like haul videos so like whenever um new lps come out all of us go scrambling to the store to to post our hauls and and update the community on what the new pets are. A lot of people like watching like LPS truth or dare videos where basically bands just comment a truth or dare and usually it involves like putting LPS in the freezer or putting ketchup on them, like along that vein of, of truth or dare. For some of like the really like heavily like desired Littlest Pet Shop toys, how expensive do you think like a collector's one would probably go for? <sighs> The most I've ever spent on an LPS was fifty dollars oh, wow. for one. Um, I'm, I'm friends with this one girl who collects um, specifically this one dachshund dog that's worth like over two hundred dollars. Like I think she has like seven of them. One very notable person in the community, her name is LPS Hannah. She's actually the most subscribed LPS tuber ever. She has almost half a million subscribers and she's very popular for having a collection of over 2000 lps that's crazy uh <laughs> we talked about this during the last interview but of course that doesn't exist anymore so um Rip. when people are doing the skits you'll see some people try to shoot it kind of more cinematically where like the lps uh figurines in the shot alone and there's like different camera angles and then some people have their hands in the shot and it's more of like a just one shot handheld you know camera where do you kind of lean on preference of style of video oh okay um well i always film with a tripod so um that at least like the way that i do my videos that's how i do it um i'm really interested in trying at least to to take a more cinematic approach and well i guess i mean you're kind of lucky in that regard because you won't have to work with any actors so no. that is that is a huge part of the appeal for Lilith's Pet Shop, I think. And then, so you you kind of mentioned that you think that the demographic is kind of younger people. Definitely. I mean, there aren't too many guys watching Lilith's Pet Shop videos. I think kind of, there's kind of maybe like 1% of people in the LBS community who are, who are boys. Um, so you do the think that- age range. Yeah, like like the My Littlest Pony thing, you think there are definitely like, I don't know what you'd call them, br uh, Littlest uh, Brett Shops? Uh, uh, a brony uh i don't even know what the equivalent would be <laughs> there's there's the kind of the guy demographic you think that's into that stuff not nearly as much i don't think you have kids who are like six seven years old and then you have people like me in like our early 20s but it's mostly female like in uh some other communities such as like the anime community or the my little pony community or even like the furry community there seems to be like kind of safe like publicly acceptable and like agreed upon, like this is what the community is, but there also are offshoots of the community that are a little bit more niche, a little bit more bizarre. Do you think that the LPS community has some of those? Definitely not as extreme as maybe like the anime community or the furry community or, or anything as big as that, um, because the community is really like the bulk is is younger girls the the vast 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 majority of lps content is totally pg um i've seen some videos with cursing or like drinking it's kind of taboo i guess yeah i mean that sounds pretty mild if like 
the more questionable stuff is uh, like language or and it's not like we use Littlest Pet Shops to recreate adult cinema and something such as that. Yeah. So, would oh you? My God. Yeah, <laughs> because <laughs> I mean, you go into you know the My Little Pony, you go into anime or furries, like they'll all reject that there's scary. stuff like that. But it's, it's scary. <laughs> yeah, it's very. It's so accessible that it almost has become like synonymous with like those communities. You know, like most people yeah, are turned off. <laughs> yeah, they're turned off from getting involved because they hear that that's all that the communities are. But like littlest pet shop community doesn't seem to have that yeah i think the only stigma that Lilith's pet shop really has is that it's just it's toys so anybody who's like grown out of them thinks that it's like weird and i know that lps videos in particular have been like if you go on youtube there are a few like lps cringe compilations which mm. i think is really sad but um for the most part i mean like some people who aren't like well versed with the community or just haven't like really given it a chance i guess might think it's like cringy quote unquote but in reality like the the whole community is super wholesome and supportive of each other and like open-minded i guess you don't really judge people by their looks because you don't really know what anyone looks like kind of. And <laughs> right. the, there's there's that kind of level of anonymity i guess which makes it really easy to be open-minded and kind to others do you think that that's kind of made it easier for people to like get started and involved in the community oh definitely well so then when you become a much bigger channel would you consider doing collaborations with like big YouTubers like outside your community? Like say uh, iDubs wanted you to be in a video, how would you feel about that? Um, maybe. I mean, it just, honestly, it depends on what kind of video they'd want to make because obviously like I wouldn't want to make, do like a collaboration with someone who's trying to like make fun of the community or someone who's trying to make me look bad or anything. Right. Like, like I wouldn't want to be like on like LPS drama alert or oh, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, if it were just like a lighthearted kind of collaboration, I would be totally open to that. And it's kind of like with this one, like, um, because you're you're just being so genuine about it. Like, this is exactly the kind of collaboration that I, I'm thinking. Um, Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> Do you think that there's like an overlap between like the LPS community and like some other communities? I guess the most notable cross is Willis Pet Shop and My Little Pony. Now it seems like YouTube's been kind of like increasing like their uh, demonetization and like censorship policies uh, with a lot of yeah. YouTubers. Yeah, um, LPS too. We are very, very lucky actually mm. um, because all of YouTube's attempts to censor people or or demonetize it kind of flies past us because we literally just make kids content so there's right. no reason for us to get demonetized unfortunately just a few days after the interview i got some pretty bad news about the community say you're an older predator and you're looking for young children uh, where's the first place you might think to look if at home you said the comment section of children content on youtube uh, you're right on the nose. And unfortunately, due to an increase in uh, predatory uh, occurrences happening uh, through the comment section of kids' content, YouTube has started to demonetize all these children's channels. CCR Television informed me that most creators in the LPS community are likely to be demonetized, being that their content consists of toys and is aimed at a younger audience. Many creators who make their livelihood off these videos are going to be greatly affected due to a couple of nasty but random occurrences. As of right now, that's really all I have to report. Uh, in the near future, I'm expecting to receive news on how it's affecting CCR television along with other uh, LPS creators. Uh, best of luck to all of you, uh, littlest pet shop people, and uh, we're rooting for you. Uh, and uh, I don't know, it'll all work out, I'm sure. Uh, good luck, uh, I'll figure it out. Anyone who watches my videos, give them as much support as you can. Well, if you have any communities that you'd like to know more information about, or you've seen sprouting out of the new section on YouTube, I'd love to investigate it for you. Uh, and as always, uh, have a good one.